This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I just handed in my thesis. And also I didn't tell you, but I am going to Taiwan. Can I crochet this checkered bag that I've been seeing everywhere? Can I crochet that within 24 hours? It took me so long to finish this. I'm gonna listen to Just For The Summer by Abby Jimenez. So I don't know about you guys, but I am absolutely loving the trend of minimalistic outfits, but then with that bang, like that pop of color. I don't know why, but it's just because it's such like a cool, calm and collected look, but then just with like a pop of I am fun, just like in your face. <laughs> I mean, just just look at my outfit. It's, it's a great example. <laughs> Thing is, I haven't been feeling that great, but not the kind of sick that makes you lie in bed the whole day, just the kind of sick that is telling you, girl, you gotta slow down just a bit. But you know, like what to do on a day like that? And then I was thinking, can I crochet this checkered bag that I've been seeing everywhere and that I am obsessing with? Can I crochet that within 24 hours? We shall find out. <laughs> But first, I gotta tell you all about Skillshare. Because did I learn my crochet skills out of the blue? No. <laughs> Skillshare is actually the largest online learning community and not just for crocheting, for lots of other different topics as well. There are thousands of different classes that you can choose from and they're all led by industry experts. You can think about many, many other subjects as well as film, illustration, interior design, like you can name it and there will be a class for you on Skillshare. Plus they also have a really, really interesting new concept, which are their learning paths. And these are actually curated sequential class collections with which you can master a specific skill or competency. Plus with summer having arrived, finally, oh my gosh, I have way more free time right now and I would really, really love to incorporate more learning during my summertime as well. And I would actually love to delve much more deeper into crocheting and learning how to understand the patterns and having little tips and tricks to up my crochet to the next level. Basically, Skillshare is here to turn your I want to's into I made that happen. <laughs> so the first 500 people that will use the link in my description box down below will receive their one month free trial of Skillshare. And I would highly, highly recommend you to check them out. Now let's go back to the video. So let me see which tutorial I found online again. The one that I will be following is one by Knikse Crochet if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But just, oh my gosh, look at that. I'm not gonna use the same colors as her even though I am obsessed with that color combination like the light pink and the green look so good together but a couple of weeks ago i did buy some yarn already so here on my little fridge i have my crochet bin of the yarns that i am using right now or the things that i'm making so cute but okay that's a different project that i failed to finish correctly oh i have so many like unfinished projects but i'm making a video of that because i still also have a top that i'm finishing with these extremely cute flowers that are giant mosquito. The color combination that I came up with or that I found is this light pink with a very dark pink, almost red looking color. These are not usually colors that I would actually go to go for. Like I said, I love that giant like pop of color in your face. And I think, ooh, <laughs> and I do think that this is a very, very fun color combination. I'm gonna start watching the tutorial for a bit and then let's see how far I'll come because I'm not sure if this is enough yarn for one checkered crochet tote bag. We shall see. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> So now I have 40, so 41. Sometimes I just, I don't know what her next step is gonna be. So sometimes I just take random stitch markers and then I'm gonna guess that she's gonna turn right now. Finished my first row. But when I look at hers, I think that this is gonna be the bottom of the bag. And I think that this will be very determining in how big your bag is gonna be. And this is a small bag. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna start over again and add 20 more stitches and I do want to have a good bag, you know, so it's gonna be a little bit more work than I thought probably uh, I always kind of love and hate unraveling at the same time because it's so much work that you did but let's start again, I guess Okay, little update and by little I really mean little <laughs> I think I've spent two hours ish on it right now and this is all that I have so I think we all know the answer already to will I make it within 24 hours? Probably not. I also hate doing single crochet things because I find it really, really hard to always recognize when the last stitch is to make like a nice straight edge. I think it, you know, you can, you can see what I mean. 
but we shall see how far I'll come today. Right now I'm gonna go on a mental health walk because I haven't moved today yet and I think that would be a bit nice for my body. But on my walk, I'm gonna listen to Just For The Summer by Abby Jimenez. I am about a third, I guess, of the way through. As some of you guys might probably know, I absolutely adore Abby Jimenez. I've only read two of her most popular books. I wanna read the Friend Zone companion novel trilogy or trilogy, I'm not sure whether they are companion novels or not, but I wanna read those books as well. I have to say, at first I couldn't really get into this story. It has a really nice premise. It's about Justin and Emma and Justin gets really, like he goes viral, his story goes viral on Reddit because he apparently has a curse. Every time that he dates someone, they just break up with him. And like the moment that they break up with him, they find their perfect soulmate after that. So he's always, you know, the one before the big relationship and he, he hates it. Uh, and Emma actually has the same issue. She finds his story on Reddit, they start chatting, and they kind of like make a pact to cancel out their curse. Because what if they both start dating? The curse will be lifted. But in their attempt to break the curse, they might actually fall in love. And it takes place at a cottage house, and it has all these cute summery vibes, and they're gonna go on these really cute dates. And I just love Abby Jimenez's ability to weave very serious topics into cute romances. So it's like cute and serious at the same time, which is my perfect recipe for a perfect romance novel. So let's go walk outside, stretch our legs clear our heads um, and then do a little bit more of crocheting after that. And I probably need to do some, some school work too, but I hate it. I don't want to. <laughs> okay. I went on that walk and I came home and I was not feeling so great. So I lay on the couch for a while and then I talked to my best friend. Look, I have the bottom of the bag. So now I'm gonna watch the tutorial on how to switch colors and we're gonna start with the checkered Pattern. Okay, so frustration number one. I need to be finishing this row with five of the light pink to turn around the corner, but as you can see, I have one stitch left here. So what do I do? Do I add a sixth light pink stitch making this whole row not even anymore? Or do I try to ignore the stitch and just like move on to the side, which I've tried, but it looks kind of weird. So, ah, dilemma. I'm just gonna try and do something and see you what it'll look like. It's almost midnight. I am gonna prepare myself for bed. I thought, I thought I'd give you an update on the crochet journey so far. It's a bit of a disappointment. I have to admit, oh my gosh. It's a bit of a disappointment in the fact that I have been spending so many hours crocheting. Like my wrist is hurting like hell. I've watched 10 episodes of Sex in the City, I'm almost done. And I don't want it to end because this TV show has been pulling me through my whole thesis experience. And it's like progressive, but also totally not progressive at all at the same time. Like so many things have not aged well at all, but crochet update time. I was so delulu, so delusional that I thought I would be like halfway with the bag after well, I haven't of course been fully crocheting for like 12 hours, but I think I have had a solid three to four, I guess. And this, this is all that I have. Yeah. So as you can see, let me demonstrate. It is curling up at the ends, which I think is gonna happen eventually, but it wouldn't have been as much as it is right now. But I haven't caught up uh, with my audiobook and the physical copy like where I am currently in the story. So let me put my bookmark correctly. It smells so nice, this book. Okay, this book is like about 420-ish pages. I'm almost halfway through. I'm starting to love this pairing more and more. The angst of them even just kissing right now is like the buildup is crazy. And I know that for some people that might be a letdown, they want extreme steamy romances, which I mean, they can be good. But I love the yearning for like, ooh, you know, the characters wanting each other so, so badly. The things that they are both dealing with are quite hectic. Like it's being said on the back of the book as well so it's not really a spoiler but justin is having to take like custody of his three siblings because of a problem with his mom that you will find out a bit later in the book so i'll just 
shut my mouth. And Emma has some childhood trauma as well, like regarding her mom and like abandonment issues. So it's quite heavy. So if you want your romances to be all cutesy and fluffy or mainly just focused on the hot and steamy things, then this is not it for you. If you want a book that deals a lot more with like psychological themes, you will like this actually. But it is nice to just keep it on whilst I'm crocheting and I'm gonna read some more before I go to bed right now and try to sleep a bit because I'm tired, okay? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's June 16th, which probably is not a super special day to you, but for me, it is the day that I hand in my thesis. <laughs> I don't know how or why I'm still so relaxed while I still have finish writing my discussion, which is the most important part of your thesis. I think I've just been kind of living in oblivion for the past week because I also worked at a festival, like a weekend festival, and I camped for the first time ever in my entire life. That's how last week went. It was a ton of fun. Honestly, an experience that I do not wish that I hadn't experienced. Wow, sentences are difficult. This is my thesis brain. <laughs> Wouldn't have swapped out that experience for anything, but because of that, my whole week has been very like low energy, trying to catch up on sleep, but my battery's dying. <laughs> okay, I'm back. My battery is, is semi alive again. What I was gonna say though, is that the original purpose of this video was for me to crochet this bag in 24 hours. Now it's been two to three weeks later, and this is what I have. And I can tell you that I have been crocheting for many, many hours. I am loving the color combination though and like how this is gonna look. The thing is, I'm a little bit confused because the girl in the video, she did, I think she had the same thickness of yarn. So I think this is like four and a half millimeter thick yarn. She did not make the bag as wide as I'm doing right now, but I just want there to be enough room to fit a book and maybe some snacks and a drinking bottle and stuff like that. And if I would have made the bag her size, it would have been a whole lot smaller. I think definitely like four to five squares smaller than it is right now. But she had a height of seven squares. And I have done my seventh square right now, and this is not high enough. Like if I were to grab a paper bag right now, you can definitely tell <laughs> it would not fit. <laughs> I think I have to make this bag 10 squares long and I'm currently working on my eighth. So yeah, that's kind of my little life and crochet update. It's actually kind of like, I'm not really realizing it at the moment. I've just been living a little bit like, in a blur because I have other things on my mind, which I really need to give you guys an update on. But I'm gonna be done with my second bachelor's degree and it scares me because I have been postponing my semi-adult life for years on end right now. And I'm still postponing it because of the thing that I will tell you a little later. So like not even next school year, but the school year after that, I really have to start doing a master's degree and then kind of accept a possible adult life. finally go to the fucking library because it's 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> I just came back from handing in my thesis. I feel that I have all of these emotions, but it's very difficult for them to come out. And I don't know why. <sighs> Let's put on a little light, shall we? Oh, okay. I don't know why, but like over the past year since my break, I just haven't been able to really like feel my feelings and like fully indulge into the sadness and the crying, like even right now, like I feel like I have to cry a lot because I just handed in my thesis that I worked on for like six months. And also I didn't tell you, but I am going to Taiwan in two months. <laughs> on an exchange, um, I'll probably talk about it more when I feel a bit Ugh. But I think I have been like postponing the realization of that, of me having to prepare to go on an exchange for multiple months on the complete opposite side of the world because I still had my thesis and I still had my finals and they're all gone right now. And now I really have to start preparing for not being here for so long. And like on the one hand, it's super exciting. But now that I'm getting closer to it, 
it's getting more and more, um, it's making me feel more and more anxious, which is obviously a super logical feeling. And like everyone who goes on an exchange probably has that or like almost everyone. And I'm just so proud of what I've done in the past year. I feel like I should acknowledge that more and that I should feel a little bit more proud of myself. <sighs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, I finished everything for the bag. Now I need to stitch the handles together and like, then we're done, then we're done, holy crap. And I need to update you guys on the whole Taipei situation. I booked my tickets tonight with my mom and my best friend, which, oh my gosh, it's so surreal still. The money is spent, so I'm flying to Taipei on August 20th. Oh, so crazy. It's my first time turning it inside out, outside in, whatever. Seeing what the bag looks like. I hope the strap is long enough. I think it is. It took me so long to finish this. Oh my God. Okay, I don't have much time to film. I finished my bag and I want to show you because it looks so good, especially with this outfit. You cannot really see, wait, maybe I should tilt you. I'm wearing such a cute dress as well. Like, oh my gosh. What a look. I am so curious whether some of you recognize this background because it's been a while since I've been in my parents' house and I miss my bookshelves here. Like, oh, they make me so happy. So yeah, I finished my dream crochet bag. It did take me three to four weeks. Instead of 24 hours, I was very, very optimistic. I honestly thought I was able to do it, but the switching of the colors, the single crochet, which is a super tight type of crochet that you have to do, it just took so freaking long but I am beyond happy with the end result. I think it looks so good. I also thought I should give you a little update on what I thought of Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez because she's one of my favorite romance authors. Like her romances, chef's kiss because they are filled with fluff and super, super cute moments and main characters like love interests that most of the times really, really know how to communicate their feelings and think about their lives and their love interests in a very normal way instead of like the super extreme toxic relationships that I often see in romance novels. And what I also love about Abby Jimenez is her mental health stuff that she puts into the books. But with Just for the Summer, I thought it was was maybe a little too heavy for what I was looking for at the moment. Maybe I wanted a little bit more of a cutesier romance than all of this childhood trauma that these two main characters had. I did think that Abby Jimenez did an amazing, amazing job at how she talked about it, portrayed it, interweaved it into the story. The ending of this book though, it's like, it happens very often in these romance novels that, you know, everything's going great, like something bad happens. And then right at the end, just the slightest, teeniest, tiny, tiniest bit of the story is then still filled with the couple being happy and I always want that little tiny bit to be a little longer. I just, I kind of hate it with romance novels that they nine out of ten times do this. They make the couple suffer right before the end of the book and I'm like, how are you going to resolve this in like 30 pages? <laughs> Definitely not my favorite Abby Jimenez book. I think so far, Yours Truly is my number one, then Part of Your World, and then this one. Those are the three that I have read, but I wanna read way more of her work as well. That's all that I had to say for now. If you want me to crochet some other projects and you have a link to the patterns or to a YouTube tutorial, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. I hope that you enjoyed this different type of video on my channel. Thank you to Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in my description and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!